Hi, my name's Mark, one of the pastors here at Trillium. A few years ago, I, I bought this beautiful red-orange shirt from Sale. It was on sale at Sale. Got a great deal on it. And it was a beautiful shirt. It was made of a very unusual kind of fabric. And eventually, you know, I had to wash it, and then it needed ironing. Uh, when Sally and I got together, we had two irons. We had two of everything, pretty much. Two irons, and my iron got put down in the basement someplace. Got lost track of it. Sally's iron was kept upstairs with the ironing board, and so here I am ironing this very odd shirt with her iron, which I don't really understand this iron. I, the settings don't make sense to me, the dials and all that, and all of a sudden I'm ironing this beautiful shirt and I burn the shirt. I mean, I mean melt the shirt. I melted right through it and didn't even know that was possible. And in that moment, I said something that was very unfortunate. Damn you, Sally. I, 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 these words just popped out of my mind uh, and, and on my lips. And it came out loud. And, and I realized uh, how fast that can happen in us when we, when we move to blame others. I was watching a Brené Brown video on blame. I could really re relate to what she was talking to, how fast the mechanism is. It's milliseconds. And, and, and of course, when I calmed down, I realized, of course, it wasn't Sally's fault at all. In my grief, in the moment of ruining this beautiful shirt, I had to blame someone. Someone had to be responsible, and it couldn't be me. We've been talking about weaponizing our hurt in life, or our pain. I think blame is one of the primary ways we weaponize our hurt against each other. And the capacity to blame one another is, is just uh, un unbelievable, really. And the speed which it occurs, and the pervasiveness of it at all. It's just if we can't sit with the emotions. We can't sit with the grief, or the sorrow or the disappointment, or the pain. We have to, in a sense, lash out at people in some form or another. We need to weaponize it. And in that weaponizing it, we can further the pattern of pain in life. I don't know if you've come across a situation, I'm sure you have, where you've instantly blamed somebody else for what, what's happened in your life. I mean, often when we think about it later on, we realize, well, the blame wasn't really deserved, but in the moment, it's, it's so tempting to go there with each other. Jesus talks in the Sermon on the Mount, in the Gospel of Matthew, of not judging each other, of not criticizing each other, of not blaming each other. Yeah. And, and the reason for that, I think, is because in the, in the blame game, what goes out goes in. We're connected to each other in ways that I don't think any of us truly understand. There's a, there's a connection at the level of spirit, of mind, that transcends the body and we're connected with each other. So what we do to other people, we end up doing to ourselves and what we do to ourselves, we end up doing to other people. So when we criticize and condemn, blame others, that energy goes out into the world and it polarizes people, pushes people apart from each other, but it also goes inside too. And when we blame ourselves, because inevitably in, in tragic situations where something in us gets hurt or something we love gets broken, it goes inwards too. The blame can go inwards. We end up polarizing ourselves from others and separating ourselves even from ourselves. And that's the tragedy of life. And Jesus calls his disciples in the Sermon on the Mount to be attentive to how we speak and how we act out through our grief and pain in life. The hurts that we suffer in life that are inevitable can have such huge implications for how we live with ourselves and our neighbor because we're all connected to each other. There's this unified consciousness that we share. So I realize the next time I burn my shirt or something like that, the next time I have some grief in my life or some hurt to deal with, some disappointment or sorrow, how I attend to it is so critical. Rather than being tempted to blame that person over there or even to point the finger at myself, I think I need to just simply sit with the, the, the feeling, hold it close to myself, live in the grief or the sorrow, and then wait to see what happens from that place. 